So this is a great book um, for a lot of great reasons. Uh, the main reason that I really like this book and enjoy it is because it's a book about um, what it's like to not know if people care about you, but people still care. Like people will always be there for you as long as you have good people around you. So this book is called Somebody Loves You, Mr. Hatch, and it's by Eileen Spinelli, and pictures are by Paul Yalowitz. Somebody Loves You, Mr. Hatch. Mr. Hatch was tall and thin, and he did not smile. Every morning at 6.30 sharp, he would leave his brick house and walk eight blocks to the shoelace factory where he worked. At lunchtime, he would sit alone in a corner, eat his cheese and mustard sandwich, and drink a cup of coffee. Sometimes he bought a prune for dessert. You can see Mr. Hatch leaving early in the morning, and you can see him eating over here too. After work, he would make two stops at the newspaper, at the, at the newsstand to get the paper, and at the grocery store to buy a fresh turkey wig for his supper. Fresh turkey wing. I make mistakes too, right? So you can see him buying his newspaper and buying his dinner. After supper, he read the paper, took a shower, and went to bed early. He keeps to himself. That is what everyone says about Mr. Hatch. So you can see him over here again buying those two things and then also getting ready to go to sleep early because he keeps to himself, as everyone says. One Saturday, when Mr. Hatch stepped onto the porch with his dustpan and broom, he got a surprise, a package wrapped in brown paper. He had never spoken to the postman before. Thank you, Mr. Goober, he said. Mr. Goober smiled. You're welcome. I always enjoy delivering packages. Mr. Hatch tore the brown paper off. Inside was a white box, which he opened to find another box. This one was heart-shaped all satiny red with a pink bow on top. It was filled with candy. Something fluttered to the porch floor. It was a little white card. He picked it up. It said, somebody loves you. Only then did he remember that this was Valentine's Day. So you can see him getting the delivery and talking to the postman, Mr. Goober, and then getting the big package of candy. You can even see the note there on the bottom too. I wonder who wrote him this note and gave him this giant package of candy for Valentine's Day. Mr. Hatch wandered and wondered, now who would send this to me? He was all alone, he had no friends, and yet someone, someone, had sent him a Valentine. Who, who? He put the box on the coffee table and tried to do some dusting, but every time he left the room, he had to keep peeking to see if the box was still there. He dusted and dusted. The dust cloth seemed to whisper, somebody loves you, somebody loves you. At last, he flung the dust cloth away and exclaimed, why, I've got a secret admirer. And then he did something he had never done before. He laughed. He laughed and danced and clapped his hands. And then he took a piece of candy from the box and ate it. Interesting. Mr. Hatch changed his shirt and found some old aftershave in the bottom drawer. He splashed it on his face. He picked out a yellow tie with blue polka dots and put it on. And then he went for a walk. Maybe, he thought, I will meet the person who sent me the candy. Of course, no one had ever seen Mr. Hatch wearing a tie or smelling of aftershave or smiling. So he got a lot of attention. Mrs. Weed tripped over her dog. Mr. Dunwoody nearly fell off his ladder, and little Tina Finn spilled all the toys of, of her wagon. Mr. Hatch waved hello to them all. He's like a whole different person to everybody. On Monday, it was back to work. At lunchtime, Mr. Hatch sat in the middle of the cafeteria. He spoke to everyone and passed out chocolates from his heart box. On the way home, as usual, he stopped at the newsstand, 
Mr. Smith handed him the usual newspaper. I think I'll have a pack of mints, said Mr. Hatch. Not as usual. Mr. Smith was shocked. Was that you speaking, Mr. Hatch? Indeed it was, said Mr. Hatch. I said I would also like a pack of mints. And if you don't mind me my saying so, Mr. Smith, you don't look very well today. Mr. Smith recovered from his shock to reply, you're right, I don't feel very well. I have a cold. I was supposed to go to the doctor's this afternoon, but the stand has been so busy, I haven't had the time. Mr. Hatch smiled. Why, I'd be happy to watch the stand for you while you go. Mr. Smith could hardly believe his ears. You would? Certainly, just show me what to do. And so, Mr. Hatch ran the newsstand for an hour. He wondered if any women who stopped, by, stopped to buy a paper or a magazine or a candy bar had sent him the mysterious Valentine. So here you can see Mr. Hatch passing out the candy during uh, his work time. And then over here you can see him helping out with the newsstand. It's a whole different Mr. Hatch. When Mr. Smith returned, Mr. Hatch made his usual stop at the grocery store. I'm a little tired of turkey wings. He said, he told Mr. Todd, I think I'll have a nice, fresh slice of ham. Mr. Todd weighed the meat and wrapped it. You look worried, said Mr. Hatch. I am, said Mr. Todd. My little girl is late. She hasn't come home from school yet, and I can't leave the store to look for her until my wife arrives. Goodness, why didn't you say so, said Mr. Hatch. I will go look for her. And so he walked to school and found little Melanie Todd by the swings and brought her home. Thank you, thank you, said the grocer. Anytime, said Mr. Hatch. So here we can see Mr. Hatch switching up things and getting something different, and then also helping Melanie Todd get home. Well, to the grocer. After supper, Mr. Hatch did not bother to read the paper. He decided to bake brownies instead. It would be nice to have brownies to share the next day with the people at the shoelace factory. As he baked, the warm chocolate smell of brownies floated through the neighborhood. Children gathered around Mr. Hatch's house, sniffing the air. Well, I suppose the factory can wait, said Mr. Hatch as he looked out the window and he brought out two platefuls. Now what are brownies without lemonade, he said, and he stirred up a nice cold pitcher. When the parents came to gather their children, they had some brownies too. It turned out to be a picnic in Mr. Hatch's backyard. He dusted off an old harmonica and played songs he remembered from his boyhood. Everyone danced. Turns out Mr. Hatch's brownies made a party happen, and his lemonade, and his harmonica. And so the days and weeks went by. When Mr. Hatch wasn't smiling, he was laughing. And when he wasn't laughing, he was helping someone. And when he wasn't helping someone, he was having a party in his yard or on his porch. He seemed to have forgotten about the person who sent him the valentine. Then one afternoon, Mr. Goober, the postman, came to his door. His face was very serious. Come on in, Mr. Goober, said Mr. Hatch. You look upset. I am upset, he said. I made a mistake some time ago, and my supervisor is very angry with me. Do you, do you, yes, Mr. Goober, what is it? Do you recall the package I delivered to you on Valentine's Day, I think it was? Yes, I believe so, Ms. replied Mr. Hatch, beginning to feel a little uneasy. You can see Mr. Goober there, looking like he made a mistake. I don't suppose you still have it, said Mr. Goober sadly. As a matter of fact, Mr. Hatch said, I still have the box. The candy is gone, though. Why do you ask? The postman took a deep breath. <sighs> I'm afraid I delivered it to the wrong address. It was supposed to go to another house. Mr. Hatch recalled tearing off the brown paper. It had never occurred to him to look at the address. He fetched the heart-shaped box and the pink bow and gave them to the postman. I do hope your supervisor won't be too angry with you now. The postman was heading down the sidewalk when Mr. Hatch called from his porch. Mr. Goober, I, f I forgot something. He gave the postman the little white card. There's the giant heart shaped box and there's the card.
Alone in his living room, Mr. Hatch sighed. Nobody loved me after all. Then he read the paper, took his shower, and went to bed early. The next morning at 6.30 sharp, Mr. Hatch left his brick house and walked eight blocks to the, chocolate, the shoe lake factory. At lunchtime, he sat in the corner by himself, ate his cheese and mustard sandwich, and drank a cup of coffee. After work, he stopped at the newsstand for his paper, but he did not speak to Mr. Smith. And he ordered his turkey wing from Mr. Todd. He did not smile. Nor did he pat little Melanie Todd on the head or bake brownies or have picnics or parties or play his old harmonica anymore. Everyone whispered, what is wrong with Mr. Hatch? Mr. Groover, the postman, told him. We love Mr. Hatch, insisted Mr. and Mrs. Dunwoody. He gave us flowers for our garden. He helped me mend our, or mend our back fence. Mrs. Weed nodded. I love him too. He saves his bones for my dog, Ruffy. Ruffy barked. She loved Mr. Hatch too. Mr. Smith told everyone how Mr. Hatch had watched his newsstand so he could visit the doctor. And Mr. Todd told everyone how Mr. Hatch had found his little girl. All the children in the neighborhood remembered Mr. Hatch's wonderful brownies and lemonade, and most of all, his laughter. Poor Mr. Hatch, they said, what can we do? Then Mr. Goober announced, I have an idea. So you can see everyone remembering all the things that Mr. Hatch did for them. And then Mr. Goober has an idea. On Saturday morning, Mr. Hatch woke up to a bright and sunny day. He put on his old overalls and went to the porch with his dustpan and broom. He couldn't believe his eyes. All over the porch were red and white hearts and pink bows. There were boxes of candy on the chairs and yellow streamers flowing from the ceiling. And sticking up out of his mailbox was a shining silver harmonica. The front yard was filled with people, happy, smiling people. They were holding up a huge sign with hand-painted letters. It said, everybody loves you, Mr. Hatch. Everyone loves him. So many people showing Mr. Hatch amazing amounts of love. I think that's awesome. Mr. Hatch dabbed at a tear with his handkerchief. I do believe, he sniffed, Somebody loves me after all. And then he smiled, and then he laughed, and then he hurried down to be with his friends. So, like I said, I love this book because it shows that you never know who cares about you and what you can do for other people too. So thank you for listening and thank you for watching. And if you're reading along, thanks for reading along too.